every piece of this is man's bullshit. They call this war a cloud over the land, but they made the weather, and then they stand in the rain and say, shit, it's raining! And that is the world we live in today. We witness a world trying to fix these gargantuan, unfixable problems that it created for itself. And today shows yet again the phenomena that we are living with, which is, and let me change this to a more pleasant color for you, by the way. Um, the truth is on occasion allowed to escape, or it, whether it's allowed to or not, it does escape. But then the powers that be see that it is snuffed out quickly, lest it become too apparent. This is the truth. This is a fraud. And it's not just because it's down and up. This is the natural order of things. The truth is that the problems are unfixable. The artifice is that Hollywood and sitcoms from TV and all the rest have trained people to think that everything's going to be just fine. And they grab those rumors and run with them. Even if we look on a much broader scale, let's back this up to one year. This is the truth escaping. This is a multi-trillion dollar effort to put a lid on it. And the more lids that are piled on top, the more horrendous the explosion is going to be when it finally can't be contained anymore. And my only hope is that we're still around for that. Because for three years now, uh, those lids have been piled up and things have been getting worse all the time in that cauldron. But people just think it's going to get better. And it can't get better until it's allowed to get worse. So I have really, it's been a long time since I've seen so much frustration from all corners. Um, because that tug of war between the truth and artifice is causing a lot of people, blown bare alike, to get jerked around. And so looking at the ES over the past couple of days... The bulls buying here got jerked around. The bears, like me, who were delighted to see this kind of thing, got jerked around. And in a smaller version, bulls and bears got jerked around here and here. And yet again, the bulls, you know, just since they were probably asleep here, the market kindly gave them another chance to get screwed over. And based on that ridiculous IMF rumor, the bulls got another golden opportunity to get screwed around once more. So if you want to be messed with, the, op the opportunities are abundant. Um, looking more broadly, we can see the um, mega spike here was really the first push, about, about two-thirds of a push from where we are now. By and large, it's been trending higher, as you can see. The base here at about 1245 or so hasn't been permitted to break. Um, I had thought, incorrectly, that uh, it could break today. We had, in the NQ particularly, this very nice uh, topping pattern, which started to break, retraced, and I, I made a post about this. I thought here would be a fantastic time to short. Not so. It uh, pushed past it, started to kind of ease back, and then shot higher again on that aforementioned rumor. So, uh, big fat mess. I mean, I'm only recording this an hour after the close, and NQ's even uh, you know up a little bit more now. But uh, I say this way too often. I'll be glad when this week is over, because this you know all the little Euro people will go back to their homes and we'll be done with this. I just you know I just want whatever news there is to be over with. Uh, you know, I imagine that nothing will be done and they'll announce another conference. So this is just never going to end. This is, I, I think we've all lived sinful lives and are living some sort of bizarre uh, nightmare purgatory right now because of it, because this is just crazy. The euro, unlike the ES, has been trending lower, weirdly. Um, it's funny because uh, any motion, no matter how modest on the euro, seems to have a huge positive effect on the ES. 
And what that suggests to me is if the euro actually does move more than a few pips, in other words, if there's a big positive announcement that the ES move could be pretty explosive. Uh, but it, I mean, look at this, just there's nothing happening. I mean, 1.34, you know, there's a lot of activity above it and there's a lot of activity below it. Really very little to be uh, concluded from all that. Uh, let's back this up here to my old usual tenure. Anecdotally, I will say that when we have a situation whereby Groupon is up 10% on the day, we're kind of back into idiot territory. Um, I've drawn a line here, which was sort of the failure level last time that kind of raised attention. You know, mild point of interest. But, you know, all these goofy uh, social networking stocks had positive days pretty much. Pandora up 2%. Zillow up almost 7%. You know, so the the goofiness has returned. Looking at some uh, less goofy items, uh, crude oil, actually kind of soft today, still very much respecting that trend line. Uh, most of my shorts are kind of energy related, as is often the case these days. Uh, I don't have any big shorts because I just don't have the stomach for it right now. I just don't have the stomach for it. Days like today uh, take away another portion of whatever stomach I do have left because uh, they started dynamite profit and uh, by the day by the time the day ended a uh, small loss for the day so just really disheartening and discouraging because I working that hard to produce a loss sucks um, so uh, I've got a mix on the longs and shorts uh, about oh something like 30 70 uh, long short percentage mix but nothing big on the short side. On the long side, I will mention that I do have a rather large position in gold, GLD. Um, speaking of which, the uh, future on that is funny and very chart friendly right now. I mean, this, this is beautiful. It's like a old Indian arrowhead. This is a gorgeous symmetric triangle. And um, it's so far along the triangle that an exit from the triangle Probably won't be that dramatic. I mean, if it had exited, for example, here or down here, it would have been, but it, we're, we're almost to the vertex here, so it kind of peters out. But all the same, um, gold, I'm figuring any serious monkey business from Euroland uh, probably will help gold, and this chart doesn't look bad. I'm not messing with silver right now, but by the same token, silver has a very similar kind of pattern going on. Notice, though, that you know we were just at gold, Gold was up um, almost a full percent, whereas silver is actually down about six tenths of a percent. So definitely the weaker uh, twin. One sliver of decent news is that bonds were pretty strong today. Uh, the stronger bonds are, the more positive that is for um, the wonderful world of equity bears. It's kind of a must have for those to be strong. Uh, the Indu today, um, just all over the map. Uh, if we do get a move higher, I guess the real question is if it'll move above that trend line. Um, I will probably throw in the towel at that point because that's, uh, that's kind of our, really the last bastion is, is this kind of resistance level. Um, by the same token, if it starts falling, there is a heck of a lot of support down here. So to my way of thinking, it's the rest of the year could be this rather narrow range in the low 12,000s, upper 11,000s. We only have 16 days left in this cursed, horrible year that I don't ever want to see again. Um, but those 16 days could be uh, rather surprisingly placid if we just kind of monkey around uh, in those areas. Uh, the Russell was weak today, relatively speaking. Uh, it was down on a day where the Dow was up. Um, as we zoom into it, those gaps are still holding for the moment. Uh, we've got this one at um, 75913. And more importantly, this one at about, um, about 771. I could inch it up a little higher to like 773.22 or so. But uh, we don't want to get past those because if we do, you can see here, this isn't, this isn't a bad bottoming formation at all. 
Um, if we pierce those, we could be heading back toward 800 land on the Russell. Um, I'll also point out, you know, I'm pissing and moaning and bitching here. Uh, this whole area, this entire thing, which lasted, how long did this last? About um, nine months. This is very much what we're going through right now. I mean, you know, if we look back here, the market wanted to fall. The market was going to fall, but it wasn't falling. I mean, it's just a tease because you can see this topping pattern here, down, up, down, up. It's like doing push-ups here. And uh, finally, finally, uh, once again, the truth was allowed very swiftly to escape. And this is what I'm trying to warn you about because <laughs> when the fall comes, it'll be done in like two weeks. I mean, when the fall comes, you're going to see thousands and thousands, sound like Carl Sagan here, billions and billions. We're going to see thousands of points off the Dow really, really quickly. And it's not the sort of thing where a week later you decide to short. I mean, the only people that are going to profit are, well, are going to, first of all, those who like have tons of put options. God bless them. I won't be one of them because I don't touch those things anymore. But uh, you could see some multi-thousand percent gains in some options. But what I'm saying is that, you know, when you're like down here, the equivalent, that's not when you decide, okay, the market's finally falling. You basically have to have the persistence and good luck to be shorting, you know, here over and over and over and over again, cursing the day you were born because this, uh, it just won't let go until such time it just, just collapses. Um, so that's, to my way of thinking, that's what we're going through right now. Just this this horrible grind, like that, yuck, dragomatic. Uh, what else? Maybe I'm done. I may be done. Have I complained enough for the day? I don't know. So I don't know. Maybe I haven't complained enough. Let's just wrap it real quickly here. Uh, oh, good. And the Nasdaq's up even more now. Um, what we have here on the NQ is uh, this has been bound below 23.44.75. So for four days in a row, it's been threatening that level and it hasn't gotten past it. Um, it better stay down. If it does break above it, I would actually say the, the next, this line here would be mildly important resistance. But we're, where we really want to fall to is back toward this lower trend line. Um, but we may be waiting until next year for a break because at this point it's just... Um, I don't know. They're just kind of winding the clock down at this at this time. So that's it. Got to wait for the Euro thing to finish. Um, and uh, until it does, and until such time as we break that trend line, days are going to be just as annoying as this one for bulls and bears alike. So that's my cheery news. I'm going to go do other things now, and I bid you a good evening in spite of all this claptrap. See ya.